Okay, this sermon is entitled, Purpose Statement. So I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 89 reads, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, Mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have have sworn unto David my servant. Stop right there. Now turn over to Luke chapter 1. In Luke chapter 1, we have what would be considered a purpose statement. It tells us that we can have a perfect understanding about the things of God. And despite what a lot of naysayers and doubters and secular people may say, we can understand, you know, God in a very clear way. And we see this in Luke chapter 1, in verses uh, 1 through 4, it reads, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, okay, most excellent Theophilus. Now, in verse 4, is kind of like the purpose statement. It says, that thou mightest know the certainty of those, of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Now, what is the point of a purpose statement? Well, the point is to let people know what a particular or a specific you know, chapter, or in some cases book, you know, what they are talking about and why they were written. Now, we see in Proverbs chapter 1 why the book of Proverbs was written by Solomon. It says, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. In verse 2, it tells us why it was written. It says, it says to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and, and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The reason why Proverbs was written is to help us grow and and to give us a a better understanding of God's word and to help us to increase in in our knowledge. So we need to understand why certain books in the Bible were written. Now, let's turn over to 1 John. 1 John chapter 5. In 1 John chapter 5, in verse 1, it reads, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. He's reminding believers in Christ that they have been you know, born of God. In other words, born again. The purpose statement in this chapter would be verse 13. It says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Now, we have a specific audience here. He's telling this to only believers in Christ. This is not to unbelievers. Okay? These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Now, if you want the purpose statement of the, of the entire epistle of John, or first, you know, first John, we can find it right here in chapter 1, in verse 4. It says, and let's start off with verse 1, because we're going to le- work up to verse 4. It says, that which... It was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shew unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Now, in verse 4, he tells you the purpose statement of the entire epistle. It says, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Now, he's saying that he wants, you know, believers to have joy, but not just any type of joy. He wants them to be replete with joy. He wants them to have fullness of joy. So now, let's turn over to the book of John. Why was the book of John written? Now, the book of John was written so that the unsaved you know, could be saved. That's why in John 3.16 it says, For God so loved the world. He's addressing this book to the world. Now, there are lots of other, you know, books in the Bible, in the New Testament, namely, that will tell you how to be saved. I'm not, I'm not excluding, you know, that, that, that teaching or doctrine 
of salvation to the book of John alone, but this was the book that was written exclusively for that purpose. So if you want to, if you want to know where to go to find, you know, verses on eternal life or verses on salvation, John was written for that purpose. That's why the book of John has, has the most verses on salvation than any other book in the Bible. And the purpose statement is found in John chapter 20. John chapter 20, and it reads in verse, verses 30 and 31, it reads, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the, in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, that she might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. And we know this is the purpose statement because it says specifically, but these are written. And why, why was the book of John written? Written so that the unsaved could know how to be saved. And it's by believing on the name of Jesus Christ. So the reason why this is so important to know is because if you don't understand the purpose of why a specific you know, chapter or passage was written, you'll get a bunch of confusion and false doctrine will transpire. That's, that's why we have false teachings out there. People just jumping around the Bible discursively. They're not putting anything together. They're not understanding, you know, the purpose of why certain things were written. And then we have a bunch of, you know, like I said, confusion. So it's very important that we understand, you know, purpose statements. So that's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.